who needs labels, basically, these days, now that artists can at least, in theory, do everything themselves? Yeah, but, but there was, they become labels. I think what it, all, what it is, is two things. It's structure and expertise. Yeah. And absolutely. And, I mean, as in the 70s, record labels were management companies. Now management companies and artists turning into labels. And I think there is a certain element of melting lines. But what is not changing is the expertise and the structure. So next to the structure, you need to know the markets you're working in. You need to know the, the, the players, the people you want to engage. You want to know how to reach your goals. And that's an expertise an artist normally does not have. Mm -hmm. This artist can bring this expertise externally into his camp. Or he can do a deal with a label service providing company, but therewith it is a record company. I think the question rather is uh, who is doing the investment? Because there is a lot of structures out there, you know, there's a lot of structures out there, there's a lot of expertise out there. You can buy, you can hire, you can recruit, you know, but the element question is whoever does the investment keeps the rights. And, and that is the reason why young bands have probably difficulties to release music by themselves because they, they, they cannot finance their investment. Whereby established bands, where we can, which can do their own investment, will probably more go into a structure where they hire a record company or bring the expertise in. What degree of freedom should labels let artists have? As much as possible, and, and as much as possible needed within the investment. I think what we're also seeing now, speaking about freedom, artists these days know everything about marketing. I mean, that has really changed, you know. Twenty years ago, an artist was handing over his master and got told to come to a press day and not be stoned, you know. These days, artists know how to run their social media, how to position themselves, and they're in completely control of their career. And that's also where, of course, more conflicts come, because if somebody is do someone is doing an investment, he also wants to make sure it's going according to his vision and ideas. And as less there is an investment, as less there is a conflict. Sometimes there is no conflict because the record label and the artist are in line. And, um, and of course, the least conflicts are there where there is no investment. So I think the crucial point is all about who is doing the investment and what this person is expecting from it. We're doing different kinds of deals. You know, we are doing straightforward artist deals. We're doing also uh, management deals where we're also marketing the record on behalf of our management clients. And we're doing service deals where artists are coming to us and saying, can you release this record for us worldwide? And I, I, I would just say, as, as fragmented as our business is, as different all the deals are, it's always important what our partner needs. And for us, it is important that this record and this partner is within our competence. So we're creating a synergy and we can really give advice and help. And, and, and then we have to see what is best for both parties. And I can really say there is no more standard agreement within K7. And I can probably say that from a lot of record companies. Uh, there is no more standard deal. Mm. You also mentioned, um, you mentioned disruption before. Um, music was one of the first creative industries to be disrupted. Do you think that there is any way you can anticipate for disruption in the future or be, be more prepared for it? Yeah, I think you can, because if you understand how disruption, or what are the mechanisms of the destruction, and when they appear, you can also compare what to do, what not to do with other industry who probably behave better than the music industry. And there's a lot of them who behave better. Not a lot of who have behaved worse, but a lot of them who behave better. And, and, and you can prepare yourself for it because the music business is going to be disrupted again. I think at the moment we are seeing a growth because we have been on the forefront of the disruption because we are the smallest data capacity in the media and now we're seeing a growth again and uh, but that you know there will be new innovation and wherever there is innovation there is disruption so yeah we, I think that's something we can now learn how to prevent or prepare ourselves better for the next disruption by keeping an eye on innovation by, for keep, example. by keeping an eye on innovation and thinking about how to deal with innovation mm. and uh, yeah great thank you very much thank you